human nature not, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today we'll go bird watching, tomorrow we'll catch toads The next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things And I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case Open and shut No doubt about it I'm a nature nut Well, hello there, nature nuts it's a soggy day for sveckids on the sand. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look for sveckids. You know what sveckids are? They're digger wasps. Digger wasps are, well, there's a couple of them right here. They're sleeping, waiting for this, uh, this day to warm up. They're a type of wasp related to hornets and yellow jackets, but not all that closely related. They, uh, they live a very different lifestyle. They don't live in colonies or hives. They don't have a queen. The males, they just live briefly and mate. The females are the ones that are doing all the nifty stuff, and they are solitary hunters, hunters of other insects and things like that fascinating critters, although you wouldn't guess it from what they're doing right now. These ones are sleeping. They sleep in the vegetation, holding onto a plant stem with their jaws. That'd be kind of a neat way to sleep, eh? It's kind of like sleeping in the closet, holding onto the curtain rod with your teeth. There's not really such thing as a typical looking digger wasp. Some of them look a lot like yellow jackets or hornets, banded black and yellow. These ones, have quite a different look, that beautiful sort of red and black, orange and black look, big head, muscular thorax, a narrow wasp waist, and an expanded tip to the abdomen, long legs for digging, big eyes, and uh, snappy looking wings. They're actually a really handsome looking insect, if you ask me. But it's easier to recognize digger wasps by their behavior rather than by their appearance. And in order to see some behavior, we need some heat. We need some sunlight. Uh, we're in the right place. This is a sand dune. Sand dunes are easy to dig in. That's why there's digger wasps here. I mean, we can uh, pass the time by saying, practicing saying things like, spotting solitary sphecids sitting solidly surrounded by sand. Spotting solitary sveckids sitting solid, stolidly surrounded by sand. Spotting solid, stolid sveckids sitting stupidly on the sand. I don't. Anyway, sun's not out yet. You practice that at home. It's kind of fun. How stolid. The great pioneer in the study of digger wasp behavior was Jean-Henri Fabre, my favorite entomologist who lived about a hundred years ago in the south of France. Much of the time he was accompanied in the field by his friend Favier, the waggish old soldier. Favier was especially helpful at preventing passers-by from disrupting the work of the great entomologist. Monsieur, have you seen my pig? Is it a pig or a swine you seek? Ah, uh, it is a pig. Go and seek your pig elsewhere. There is great science on the way here. Ah, qu'est-ce que c'est, science? My master seeks to make a souffle from the epiphigure. Qu'est-ce que c'est, epiphigure? Epiphigures. A locust to make a superb souffle. The Ephipature? Wait. I believe your pig is in trouble over there. Ah, merci, monsieur. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Eh? Eh. Now, don't you think every nature nut could use a friend like good old Favier?
Many of the wasps Jean Henri Faber studied in France have similar relatives here in North America. Oh man, it's still pretty cool out here. But well, while we're waiting for the weather to improve, let's talk a little bit more about what these digger wasps are up to. Now, each species of digger wasp is a specialized hunter of some other sort of insect or spiders or things like that. And what they do when they find their prey is they, well, they sting it. And they sting it very precisely. They don't just sting at any old place. They have an instinctual knowledge of where to sting their prey. And that has to do with the nervous system of insects, which is, if you don't know this already, it's kind of a double strand that runs down the front of the body just underneath the surface of the skeleton of the animal rather than down the back like ours. And of course it doesn't have a back bone around it. It just lies underneath the uh, the exoskeleton. That double strand is thickened in places and those thickenings are called ganglia and they have different functions. There's one right under the throat to control the movements of the mouth parts and things like that. Three in the thorax control the movements of the legs and the wings and then there's one down in the abdomen to control the stuff in the abdomen. Now if you're a female digger wasp, you get your stinger ready and the first thing you want to do is get those ganglia in the thorax so that the wings and the legs stop moving. And that'll, that'll usually achieve a temporary paralysis or what the uh, digger wasp specialists call deactivation of the prey. For those wasps that are dealing with the caterpillar, you know they got those little pudgy legs out the back. You gotta get them in the abdominal ganglion to stop those guys from wiggling. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. That'll deactivate your average caterpillar. The coup de gras, though, is getting them in the subesophageal ganglion. That's a tough thing to say. It's the one right up there at the throat. Once you do that, achieve permanent paralysis. That's not a real knife. Permanent paralysis. Hey, now what's going on here? That's a wasp. Oh, those, this guy's gonna get stung. How? No, no, there's, that's definitely a digger wasp. This is not a wasp mimic. There's no trick here. What the heck? Ooh, don't try this at home. That looks dangerous. Now, how? That must be painful. Just the thickest fingers in the world? Yeah, put it in the vial. Get rid of that thing. Yow! So this is my friend Jack Wojcicki. He's a digger wasp expert. He's just been stung multiple times by an angry female digger wasp. How come you're not shrieking in agony, Jack? Because she couldn't penetrate my skin, John. Digger wasps aren't really that tough when you think about the food they go after. That was a Bembex, and Bembex goes after things like flies and soft-bodied insects. And, and when it's got a soft-bodied insect, it doesn't need to really thrust that ovipositor, which is its stinger, into the body with that much force. If it was a hard-bodied insect, that'd be a different story altogether. So do they ever defend their burrows by coming up and stinging people? No, actually they don't, because they're solitary wasps and they don't need to defend their burrow in that way. That's not their way of defending their nest. They can cover their nest, they can disguise their nest, but they don't sting people. Their stings are for paralyzing prey and that's all they really use them for. So what you're telling me is when I'm spending time with digger wasps, I don't have to worry about getting stung unless I'm holding them and poking them. You don't have to worry about being stung. They won't swarm you, they won't jump on you, and they won't sting you. And even if they tried, it wouldn't even fight, feel like much more than a hot needle, a hot little pinprick. And that's oh, about well, it. Oh, well, hot needles, no It's problem. not like you're gonna go into big <laughs> shock like you would go through with, uh, with like a yellow jacket or something Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, okay, gotcha. No, I just don't particularly like hot needles myself. That's well, it's not a big hot needle, it's just a little hot needle. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, tell me about Bembex. That was a Bembex. That was a Bembex. Bembex are the ones that look a lot like a yellow jacket, but they're longer, they kind of look sleeker, they got these great green eyes on them that are kind of iridescent, yellowy-greeny, even their stripes are kind of yellowy-greeny, and they got this neat little 
pointy labrum or the, the face, the bottom part of their face is a point. And sometimes they'll even use that point to stab the insects that they're paralyzing and get a little bit of extra sustenance by lapping up the juices that flow out. Bembex nests all over the sandy areas going after soft-bodied flies. Um, that's one of the cool things about all these digger wasps. They're really prey specific. Bembex will take only certain kinds of flies. There are other kinds of digger wasps that will only take stink bugs. There's other kinds of digger wasps that will only take beetles. They've, they're really, really specific as to what prey they take. Actually, there was this, this neat little incident where a stink bug kind of crash landed right in the mouth of the burrow of a digger wasp, of a, of a Bembex that was digging away trying to clean out her nest. She didn't like that stink bug being there because that's not what she goes after. She tried to get around it, couldn't get around it. Finally, she picked it up and hauled it off and chucked it away. Came back to her nest and went back to work. Um, their nests are underground, and really to get an idea of what's going on underground, you have to sort of imagine that you can see underground. Okay. So if we imagine that that's ground level and you know we're up here, there's us, make a happy face, that's where we're sitting. The Bembix digs a nest and she goes down on an angle like that and curves off and here she makes a chamber or a cell. And it's in that chamber that she's actually gonna lay her egg and stock it with food and the food is the paralyzed flies. Every time that she needs to stock it, she's got to leave that nest. She closes the door just by kicking sand over the door, and then she leaves. She comes back with a paralyzed fly, opens up the door, goes back down the tunnel, deposits the fly there. There will be several paralyzed flies, in the case of Bembex, uh, in that cell, and one egg will be laid on one fly. The wasp will lay its egg right on a certain point, usually on the thorax of the insects that's paralyzed. One egg per cell. That egg will usually be like at a limb base, a leg base, and that egg will hatch and work its way into the body and eat the insect from the inside out. It then moves on to the rest of the prey in that cell, in Bembex's cases, the flies, and eventually the larva hatch, uh, the larva pupates, turns into a, an adult and climbs its way out of the sand. The flies Bembix feeds to its grubs don't keep well since they are typically killed, not paralyzed. Pity the hopper, so still in the shade, sleeping the moment away, barely able to move at all, paralyzed, you might say. A nearby wasp is the culprit here, digging deep in the dusty ground. A tacky sphinx by name, I fear, flinging the sand around. It's all for her grub, her labor of love. It waits down below in the burrow, ready to eat the grasshopper so sweet it will relish each bite and be thorough. The wind blows the grass, the wasp works on, black and red glints in the sun. She checks her prey for freeloading bugs before the grim task is all done. Then by the antennae she drags the grig down, into the burrow for good. It gasps its last breath of the fresh prairie air before it becomes larval food. Not so appealing a thought, is it now, being eaten alive in the dark by a little white grub who considers you chow more ferocious than tigers or sharks. Refilling the entrance, she'll make it look neat, feet flying faster than fast. Soon she'll landscape it so no one would know that beneath the grasshopper has hopped its last. Wasps are closely related to digger wasps, but they only hunt spiders.
I look in for something to paralyze. She's a lone wolf hunter and she has no queen. Oh, you don't want to go to the places that she's been. Was bigger was. Was bigger was. Come across the shining sand out beyond the realm of man. The under Uncle Sam. A bigger was. Dragging her prey across the ground. Life must have its ups and downs. How she finds her burrow in all that sand is something I don't understand. Coming across the shining sand, out beyond the realm of man. Even under Uncle Sam. I think you're one. We will be fed Feasting on the living dead Strange things happen underground But still that world keeps spinning round Round, 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 round Was digger was Was digger was Cutting across the shining sand Out beyond you know, it's great to spend time in the outdoors with people who really know what they're looking at. And I was delighted when Jack showed me another tacky sphex wasp carrying a different species of grasshopper. There she goes, now oh, she's yeah. got it by the antennae. She's gonna start hauling it. Yeah, look at her kicking away there. And it's, it's, I mean, that's a big piece of prey for her. And buzzing. And buzzing, I mean, there she goes. She's trying to fly, she's using wing power to give her some lift at the same time as, as leg power. But because it's so heavy, she actually doesn't get any air lift out of it. Um, it just helps her out. She's, uh, she uses her wings to help her with her dragging. Tough work for these diggers. She also has to contend with the ants. The ants will try and steal that prey from her and she'll get into quite the battle with the ants. And it's quite, it's quite the feat to try and haul that thing up this loose sand. Oh, no kidding. But she's determined to go this way. Riding on the, on the grasshopper is the little miltogramine fly fly that lays uh, a larva on the wasp's prey. The fly larvae are already hatched, so they've got an advantage over the wasp larva. They're, they're living, so it they, doesn't take them long to, to get in. They find some soft tissue and they work their way into the body. Uh, the wasp larva has to first hatch out of its egg and then burrow in. Will the wasp larva be able to detect and destroy those fly larvae? Or? No, actually, it's quite the other way around. The, wa the fly larvae will... Uh, uh, eat the stash, including the wasp larva or the grub. Though they can dig in to the prey quickly, they can't dig in that quickly. It will take them several minutes before they can really work their way in. So when she does her inspection before going into the nest, she'll be able to clean them off. That's assuming she can find her nest again. That's a, <laughs> which is a big assumption for her at this point. She seems to be a little turned around. <laughs> oh. Digger wasps find their burrows by memorizing nearby landmarks. Now this is a velvet ant, and it's another enemy of digger wasps, another creature that tries to freeload on the labor of the digger wasp. It's looking for the burrow of a, of a digger wasp, trying to uh, lay its own egg on the digger wasp's prey. Velvet ants are a common sight in hot, dry places in North America. They are generally very, very 
brightly colored, and they're not really ants at all. This is a wingless female wasp. The males do have wings, but the females are the ones that do all the interesting stuff, as in just about all wasps. Velvet ants are also called cow killers in some place because they have tremendously powerful stings. There, that one just fended off a tiger beetle. And you, believe me, you really don't want to be stung by a velvet ant. That's why they're so brightly colored. It's yet another example of red and black warning color in nature. You can't help but like something that's called a cow killer. As far as I know, they've never actually killed a cow. But you never know. The complex habits of digger wasps are mainly intended to outwit parasites. Well, I guess that's about all the time we've got for the subject of digger wasps. The storm is moving in, it's time to go, but I want to tell you one more story before we, uh, before we leave this topic. You see, there was a digger wasp that was at the center of a great controversy a couple of decades back, the wasp Ammophila. And when Ammophila closes its burrow, it uh, oftentimes will just take a clump of sand or a clod of earth and use that to pack the entrance of the burrow. But sometimes you'll see them taking a pebble and using the pebble to tamp down the uh, earth or the sand at the burrow entrance. Very interesting, that constitutes the use of a tool. And of course, these people were, uh, were quite mystified because they didn't know whether this meant that Ammophila had the glimmerings of true intellect or whether people should simply be considered glorified bugs in their own right. Of course, it just meant that we had to redefine exactly what a tool is and exactly what people were. But uh, it's interesting that a mere digger wasp could become something of that great a social significance to people. You know what the great digger wasp specialist Howard Ensign Evans once said? He said, Indeed, the wistful hymenopterist out in his garden watching wasps and spinning his philosophy has become almost a stock figure in biology. I think that's a nice quote. I wouldn't mind being almost a stock figure in biology. That's why I'm a nature nut, and I hope you are too. See you again soon. If you get the urge to be a wistful hymenopterist, I wish you all the best. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut.